Good afternoon, everyone. TSB Television proudly presents high school girls basketball. We head to the Twin Cities backyard, Minneapolis South, Minneapolis City Conference powerhouse, as they host a powerhouse in Class 4A. It's Eden Prairie and Minneapolis South coming up next on TSB Television. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike Keating here with Sean williams wyke Sean, this is going to be Minneapolis South's first big test in the last couple months. This is their first ranked opponent they have played since December 21st. How do you prepare for the number one team in the state? We have to try to keep up the momentum as much as you can. The opponents that they had earlier were uh, not as much of a challenge as the opponent is today. So it will be interesting to see how the matchup is and to see if they can keep the momentum they've already started this season so far. Eden very loaded with depth. The field you had told me their starters may as well be Division I prospects. They include Morgan Van Rijpe Rose, who's going to Denver, Jackie Johnson, a standout junior post, and don't forget Aubrey Davis, Taylor Ewell, Eden Prairie loaded. Enough talent to go around for everyone. Minneapolis South, they've returned since the Taylor Hill era. Taylor Hill graduated a couple of years ago. South had a down year somewhat last year, but they're back in a big way, thanks in large part to Satoria Rule. And with that, we'll go to the keys to the game. We'll start with the Eden Prairie Eagles. They want to be strong and establish their tempo early. They want to hit their outside shots and disrupt the offense. Minneapolis South may not be as deep, but they have Satoria Rule. They have some decent scores in Sadaka Jihad. Their bench may not be as deep, but South certainly not a team you want to look over. And for Minneapolis South, their keys are to limit the production from Eden Prairie because they're loaded. They want to avoid foul trouble because they only play about six or seven players normally. And they want to play aggressive early on because Eden Prairie is a team that doesn't sit around. Starting lineups are coming up next. Stick around. You're watching high school girls basketball on TSB television. Let's meet the starting lineups. We'll begin with the visiting Eden Prairie Eagles. Getting a start will be Aubrey Davis, number three at guard. Jackie Johnson, number four at forward. Shane Mullaney, number 33 at guard. Morgan Van Riper Rose, number 34 at guard. And Claire Willick, number 53 at forward. Eden Prairie, a very balanced team. Not one person stands up because so many people contribute. Jackie Johnson and Van Riper Rose are two of them leading the team with 14.2 points per game. Mullaney right behind at 12.9. And then you've got Aubrey Davis and Taylor Ewell putting up nine points per game. With Eden Perry, it's pretty much take your pick. Anybody can step up. And Minneapolis South getting the start will be number two, Kanisha Green at forward. Number 10, Diamond Lane at guard. Number 13, Victoria Wool at guard. Number 15, Laura Thomas at guard. And number 23, Sadika Jahad at guard. South running a guard heavy lineup. And they have a 21 0 start thanks to Victoria Wool putting up 21.8 points per game. She's in the top 10 among scores in the state. No Taylor Hill, but for South, she's good enough. Rule and Lane both transfers from De La Salle who's now coached by Faith Johnson-Patterson, who used to coach in the same conference as Emile Jihad. She was the longtime head coach for Minneapolis North, and that's what Jihad told me is the biggest change since the Taylor Hill era, all the things that have happened at Minneapolis North, starting from Faith Johnson-Patterson's transfer to DSL to tomorrow more recruiting North players to Prairie Seats Academy, to some players bolting after last year. It's really hurt the quality of the Minneapolis City Conference, and in South's case, that puts them at a disadvantage. But Minneapolis South is the 2009 Class 4A state champions, and of course, fueling that run was Taylor Hill, currently the leading scorer in Minnesota State High School League history with 3,888 career points. She is here now. She will be playing in tomorrow's game at Williams Arena when Ohio State pays the Gophers a visit. And they will really will be missing Hill in this game, but they still have enough weapons on the team right now to make this a close one for us to watch. And of course, the key for Eden Prairie, not just the team, but they've really bought into the system established by first-year head coach Chris Carr, an NBA journeyman who spent his career with several teams, including the Minnesota Timberwolves. And if I'm correct, 
you played him back in the old days, the glory days. Back in, my, back in my Sega Genesis glory days playing the old NBA Live. But that's a distant memory and a lifetime away from the uh, PlayStation 3s or 4s or 5s or whatever going to come out these days now. <laughs> and so how was Chris Carr in NBA Live? He was always a bench player, I remember. That's all I remember. <laughs> and how much use did you get out of him? Uh, I think probably like two to four points a game. <laughs> <laughs> Spent time with the Wolves, the Celtics, the Nets, the Warriors, and the Bulls. His most productive years were with Minnesota back in the late 90s when they were building their teams that got the first round playoff appearances, but first round exits as well. But so now, his girls today will get a whole lot more points than that for sure. And the Eagles will start with possession. There's Aubrey Davis, the Bloomington Kennedy transfer. Going to Jackie Johnson. Johnson played on the team since she was a freshman, getting significant minutes since she started on the varsity program. Eden Prairie, the only team this year to take down Hopkins, who was the odds-on favorite and still is the odds-on favorite to win the Class 4A state title. Emil Jihan wanted a five-second call, but it's not awarded. Davis looking for Johnson, but it's stolen. Scramble, and Diamond Lane picks it up. Lane played at Vila Sal under Faith Johnson Patterson's first year, transferred over to Minneapolis South. We saw Eden Prairie earlier trying to make the way into the key, but the second they tried to do that, South defense shut him down and got the steal. Green missed the layup. We're clarifying the transfer rule. You sit out a year if you transfer, unless you stay within your district. And in the case of Lane and Rule, that's exactly what they did. Johnson missed the bunny. She struggled in the first meeting with Hopkins, which led to a 61-56 victory in favor of the Royals at the Dick's Sporting Goods Holiday Classic. But Eden Prairie got revenge on their home floor. Lane short on the three. Rebound Johnson. Van Riper Rose, Denver recruit, finds Mullaney. Mullaney with the finish. We get our first points of the game right there almost four minutes in. Eden Prairie's victory over Hopkins last week gave them the number one ranking in the state. Although, in my mind, I'd still say Hopkins is a strong number one contender. Eden Prairie has one more loss, even though a lot of folks credit that to a team that wasn't full strength. Rule with the 15 footer, and they weren't full strength when they lost to Hill Murray as Taylor Yule was not available. Van Riper Rose, shorts. This, this game right here will be an early test, prep them up for their game against Hopkins, without a doubt. Both teams have one game remaining in that series, and a lot of folks think it will be the first or the third of four matches between the two teams. A lot of folks have Eden Prairie and Hopkins as the contenders for the Class 4A state championship in March. They're both in different sections, so that is possible. But games are not played on paper. Oh, Rad only played on paper in the video games. <laughs> well, and even then, uh, I think Madden 11 had Pittsburgh Steelers winning the Super Bowl, and Green Bay had other ideas. Yes. <laughs> Jihad, no runner. Rebound, Willick. Ben Wright Rose, member of the 1,000 point club. Melanie <laughs> pump fakes. And Davis is bumped by Rule. We don't see a lot of aggression by them yet, but as this game picks up, we should start seeing them go more aggressively in their possessions towards the key quicker. 2 2, 14 52 remaining, and half number one. Davis having a board with Chris Carr. And now the officials are discussing whether or not that was a shooting foul. So while they take a quick break, Eden Prairie in section two in 4A. And as we get closer to the playoff time, the sections will be examined much more thoroughly. 
Their closest competition is Bloomington Jefferson, a team that's fallen off the top 10. They were rated highly in the preseason. And uh, you definitely don't want to put an overrated label in high school basketball. If you were to use such a term, Jefferson might fit that label. They got upset in a surprise loss to Apple Valley in the Richfield Holiday Classic. And it, it's a tall order right now to beat Eden Prairie and advance to the state tournament. Uh-huh, and preseason rankings in itself an example of paper right there. Section six, a little more in doubt. Johnson is blocked. She was 0 for 8 in the Dick Sporting Goods Holiday Classic against Hopkins, but she won't be shut out here. Jihad for 3. Bullseye. And we've been involved in South coverage for many years. That's something we've seen as Jihad has played every year since she was a freshman. That ball almost got away from her right there, but Eden Perry got the ball back and okay. gets the three. Van Riper Rose drains the tray. It's 7-5, Eagles over Tigers. How does it go? Anything I can do, you can, anything you can do, I can do better. Van Riper Rose is a long threat. Willick with the steal. Mullaney kicks out to Van Riper Rose, who pump fakes, finds some space, misses the J. Jump ball, possession arrow favors Minneapolis South. And when Minneapolis South has a marquee game, they almost always get an entire cross section of the city to watch, and they did that for years with Taylor Hill, and they've got the team to do it again. And the way things are looking right now, this may not be the last time South hosts a marquee game. They're in position to host the Twin Cities Championship in two weeks. Minneapolis, of course, always hosts in the odd years, and the conference champion goes on to play in that coveted game. Here's Laura Thomas, she stepped on the line, no three. We see a lot of people here at the game today, so imagine two weeks from now how many people would be here, not just in the seats, but probably also in the baseline areas too, trying to get a glimpse of the action. Uh, if only you were here four years ago, I took part in one of the most memorable high school games I ever called. It was certainly not my strongest in terms of my performance, but it was Central and South. Central had that undefeated 32-0 team. South was in the middle of the Taylor Hill era. This place was sold out. <laughs> and it was in the middle of a big snowstorm. So is it theoretically possible to sell out a high school game where you could run out of tickets to give away? They did, they had to turn people away. We had to get here early to make sure <laughs> we had a seat. In fact, it was the most cramped seat I ever had calling a basketball game. <laughs> well, you see South, not a large gym, so we mm -hmm. had to perch up in the bleachers. There's not a lot of space from the baseline to the bleachers. It's very much a feel of an NBA game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd imagine you'd have to tell a couple of people to get out of their seats, kind of like they were doing at the Super Bowl last weekend. No lawsuits were filed, though. <laughs> yes. Did you hear what the Minnesota Lynx did in response to that, though? I believe not. They are offering free tickets to the people who were shut out of seats at Super Bowl 45. I'm My guess is they're trying to get some Packers fans because there's no WNBA franchise in Wisconsin. I don't know if Johnson will establish a WNBA franchise, but she gets a basket there. That gives her four. She has her second field goal. And as expensive as the tickets were at the Super Bowl, I'm sure people who would go to the Super Bowl wouldn't have any uh, financial obstacles getting them to a Lynx link, game, at least. Lane missed a three. Green with the rebound. No cleanup. Rule with the rebound. Short. Mulaney picks it up. Ooh. Slides to Van Riper Rose, and Van Riper Rose loses the handle. Yeah, Van Riper Rose kept possession of the ball and got the points. That could have been the play of the week right there. Timeout, Eden Prairie. Oh, we had a play of the week a couple weeks ago when we covered the Hill Murray Richfield game. Tessa Sitchi drained a half court shot to end the first half. But while we're at this timeout, we'd like to remind you 
You can order a DVD copy of this by visiting us online at thesportsbrain1.blogspot.com. That's thesportsbrain1.blogspot.com. And we'd like to thank GrandStadium.tv for their support and resources in broadcasting the entire 2010-11 season to the fans out there. And while we're on the uh, talk of the Super Bowl, I noticed that the national anthem right before this game was instrumental, so <laughs> that avoided any clubs a la Christina Aguilera where we uh, would have a singer who would know all the words to the song. I still say Carl Lewis uh, beats Christina when it comes to the <laughs> most flubbed national anthem of all time. Anytime you get the players laughing, that's uh, not a good sign for your singing abilities. No, but at least you know they're loose. <laughs> and South a little tight. Now we've got another marquee event coming up next Sunday, the Daytona 500. Uh, I wonder if they're going over the lyrics to whoever will sing the national anthem there in NASCAR's version of the Super Bowl. NASCAR supporters usually on the most part are very patriotic, so I don't think there are any problems about finding a uh, person to sing that doesn't know the words. Taylor Ewell, in and out. Jump ball, Eden Perry with the possession arrow. Taylor Ewell will be heading to the University of Minnesota next year, but not to play basketball. Soccer, actually. One of the state's top soccer players, in fact, the top soccer player, scored a hat trick against YZ to win the Class 2A title. And she's been averaging about a hat trick of threes each game of about, about 9.1 this season. Becca Sparkman missed. Rule, Spinnerama, and the finish. 9 7, four points for Satoya Rule. And a foul on Lane, and she says, come on to the officials. 11-12 <laughs> remaining in half, number one. Interesting thing about Yule, when she scored the hat trick against YZ, all three of those goals were in the same net. It was in the same half then. Yes. Yep. And what I've seen her play a couple times as a basketball player, and I'd say Van Riper Rose makes the three. I'd say Ewell, if she wanted to, could easily get a college scholarship in basketball. She yeah. reminds me a lot of Dave Winfield. Yeah, we just saw her Dave Winfield skills right there when she caught that ball midair. She can, she can jump like an outfielder. A couple Minneapolis North players watching their crosstown rival. Green is fouled, she'll get free throws. Van Riper Rose, her last trade, that is her second. That gives her six points. She has half of Eden Perry's total. And now they rule it a non-shooting foul. It will go against Sparkman. That's Eden Perry's first foul of the game. Rule. Bullseye. Two more sure have a uh, hat trick and threes. And Van Riper Rose, one away from a hat trick. Maybe she needs to uh, switch sports herself. I think she's committed to basketball, and Aubrey Davis is committed to the finish. <laughs> That's her first field goal. She averages about nine a game. Sonica Jihad, the daughter of head coach Emil Jihad, who has really done wonders for the Minneapolis South program since he took over. When he first came in, back in the 2005 season, one of the first things he did was switch with practices so his players come here at six in the morning to get their routines in. Naturally, the upperclassmen balked at the idea, but uh, one of the underclassmen that really bought into it happened to be Taylor Hill. And we all know the story after that. And it paid off for the state championship and a Division I offer that he'll set out on Ohio State. Ewell with the basket after Johnson made the steal. Ewell is halfway away from her season average now. I've got two on the scoreboard for Ewell. And that's what they have, and she picks up her first foul. 16-10, Eden Prairie over the Apple South. Rule, 
can't finish. Fights her way for a rebound and draws the foul. Rule just brings that toughness and that energy that Minneapolis South was hoping to find after Taylor Hill graduated. And Ewell picks up two quick fouls. I imagine she'll take a seat. Mullaney getting ready to go back in, as is Carly Knudsen. This is South's first trip to the free throw line. Since Emil had took over, South has never lost 10 or more games in a season. They had three straight appearances in the Class 4A Finals, two second place finishes in 07 and 08, and of course, the 4A Championship over Centennial in 09. Traveling violation on Knudsen. Minneapolis South, one of the most consistent programs in the last five years. We'll see how consistent they are after this game. Jihad almost went to the half court line. That would have been a turnover and no basket from number four. That was Delilah Taylor. And you looked at the court or at play, five second violation on Eden Prairie. You think Eden Prairie would be in complete control of this game, but the scoreboard says otherwise. Yeah, and as being away from home right now and trying to uh, come to terms with playing a ranked opponent, uh, the outcome we see right now so far in this half is not surprising. But they're holding their own right now, and they have the lead right now, which is important for them. But the question is, can they build on it or at least maintain the lead? Carrying violation on Davis, Eden Prairie not helping their cause with the turnovers. In addition to Chris Carr, there's another notable name in their coaching staff, Sarah Jordan. Gophers fans may remember her as Sarah Kloon. She participated in the Molly Tadich Gopher Women's Basketball Alumni game not too long ago. And Satoria Rule is participating on the scoreboard. She already has 11. She averages 21 a game. Eden Prairie. Can't respond. That was Sparkman. Green in trouble. Not much you can do against a double team. Scramble, jump ball, Minneapolis South with the possession arrow. Minneapolis South takes a timeout with 7.49 left in the first half. Eden Prairie with just a two-point lead. In Emil Jihad's mind, he really likes the work ethic from South, and they're preparing for another run at state. They've got a tough section, though. The toughest in the state if you look at who's in it. They've got to deal with the YZ team, who hasn't won a conference game, but they could be a sleeper if no one pays attention. You've got Hopkins. The odds on favorite to win the 4A state title. And you've got Minnetonka, a team that hasn't done well against Hopkins yet. But they're a top 10 team as well. That section is loaded as always. Yeah, and, um, and playing in such a tough division like that, your record might suffer a little. But the experience of playing such as good teams as those, they actually... They, they, I think we had an audio problem here, but I was saying that playing in such a tough division, your record might suffer. But in the long run, when you're in the state tournament, that experience playing those teams will go a long way. And Emil Jihad's mind focused on commitment. He wasn't going to bolt this program after Taylor Hill graduated. He was going to find a way to overcome a new type of adversity. How you handle a program once the face of that program is no longer there. There's, there's always another face ready to take a step forward. 
on the line is Thomas, and that's a trap or a turnover. And that's what makes high school sports unpredictable and adds to the parity. You never have the same roster twice. Yeah, it's always a challenge trying to find the uh, replacement players for your stars after anywhere from two to four years. So you have to really, really uh, keep uh, a high level of talent at your team if you want to sustain dynasties that last anywhere from like uh, 10, up upwards of 10 to 20 years. Diamond Lane picks up her third foul. I don't think we'll see here for the remainder of this half. And that was one of the keys to the game, avoid foul trouble against South, not as deep as Eden Prairie. So Thomas is gonna step back in. And that's where Eden Prairie's uh, balance uh, really uh, helps come in because they can rely on a whole assortment of people while when uh, South has to set, sit out a player, it could uh, have more uh, damaging consequences further on. Mullaney, got it. That's four so far for Mullaney. South system not so different than what we've seen out of Richfield earlier this season. And they still look a little tight. If I'm a meal jihad, I'm telling my South players, loosen up a bit. This is a non-conference game that will not affect our section seating. Well, they're only four points down, so this game is far from over. I'd be careful, though. If Eden Prairie starts hitting a few shots, this could get out of hand for South. They're just committing turnovers, and it looks like this out of fear. Another blocking foul on South, and that's going to go against Green. They have to keep shutting them down like they did in the first few minutes of the game where Eden Prairie had trouble getting to the key. Kaylani Edwards in attendance. Playing for Minneapolis Roosevelt. As I said, South Games, for whatever reason, always bring a big crowd when you have a marquee matchup like you do with Eden Prairie. Davis, no good. Green with the rebound. I don't know what it is with South. Maybe it's because they're close to the Lake Street Station, close to light rail. If it's just the name recognition, the tradition, they always draw big crowds. Well, the other schools want to uh, do a little homework on them for sure. That's one reason. Well, if Minneapolis South beats Eden Prairie, it's possible to conceive them finishing the regular season undefeated because their next two games are against North and Henry. You know they're going to win against those two teams. Edison could be a challenge, and then they'll have the Twin Cities game. Thomas missed the three. Rebound Johnson. Twin Cities game. The St. Paul representative a little up in the air right now. Davis loses the ball, and another Eden Prairie turnover. Should we ask who the contenders are from St. Paul? St. Paul Central currently leading, but not by much. Humboldt got an upset win, and Central has a one-game lead in the conference over Highland Park, and Humboldt's not far behind waiting to strike. Humboldt did win last year's conference title, so if St. Paul Central and Humboldt were to tie, Central would go on, because they haven't, when it comes to who's been away the longest. Roosevelt won the conference last year, but South, no doubt. Traveling violation on Mullaney. And the bakery is very busy right now, just turnovers on both sides, almost as many as uh, the place we went to to eat. Well, those toner turnovers at Arby's are real good, but <laughs> there's, I'm seeing far more turnovers here so far in this first half than I've uh, had a chance to munch on this afternoon. in play. We should note Eden Prairie is on the downside when it comes to energy. They played Wyzetta last night. South played Southwest Thursday night. 
So South had a day of rest and a chance to scout the Eden Prairie team. Eden Prairie, of course, had to play while I said it last night, had to come around and play another team in less than 24 hours. Didn't really get much of a chance to scout this team. Well, that should even it out, Dan, talent-wise, I believe. <laughs> Foul is on Thomas or Taylor. That is South's last to give. 4.44 to go. 18 to 14 to score. I was expecting more of a shootout. But for Minneapolis South, the low scoring in the first half, I believe, gives them an edge right now. Does that mean Gene and Perry's offense isn't clicking? Johnson inside, she's clicking. Well, if it starts uh, finding a way to click, then that's bad news for South because then the lead would just get even larger. So they have to find a way for it to not just not click, but not even think about clicking. Angeli Jones in the game for the Tigers. And with the block is any fool of Eden Prairie. When it comes to strength of schedule, Aiden Prairie with a big advantage. This is their 11th game this season against a top 10 team in any class. Jahad, she's short. This is only South third, and again, their first match against a ranked opponent since December 21st when they beat Maranatha Christian Academy. That was going to be on rule. That will be her second. South also played Mini Haha Academy early on, and since then, they haven't played any ranked teams. And the big difference in that is just the conference schedule. Minneapolis playing in the Minneapolis City Conference where North got siphoned, and there isn't a lot of competition this year. Roosevelt having a down year. Eden Prairie in the reformed Lake Conference where you've got Hopkins, Wyzetta, Edina, and Minnetonka. Quality matchups all around. And playing unranked teams can really uh, lull your team into a false sense of security if you play so many unranked teams in a row where when you get to a game like this, you're just, your players won't be conditioned to uh, go to that, next, to that next level of performance that's required to defeat a ranked team. But right now, uh, South uh, is, doesn't look like they're in serious trouble right now unless they make a few adjustments. In terms of conditioning, when I talked to Emil Jihad in pre-game, he said this is what he was looking forward to. Again, he was preparing to make a run at State again. And so playing a team like Eden Prairie will give them the tools, if nothing else, to prepare for the tough play they're going to get in Section 6. South in the penalty. And it was ruled a shooting foul, so Mullaney is at the line. She has four points so far this evening. Make it five. 21-14, Eagles over Tigers. Jahad in trouble. Did you get it off in time before the five second call? No. I'd like to remind you that coming up at halftime, we will have halftime interviews and first half stats and analysis as Gary Knox and Lisa Flynn will join us in the booth. Eden Prairie. Just not sharp on their passes. Neither is South. <laughs> yeah, and Eden Prairie's been having trouble too, not uh, letting, uh, preventing turnovers in this game. And if and if they've been uh, able earlier on to uh, prevent these turnovers, the score might be even higher for them. Thomas missed the three. Johnson, one on one, no foul, open look, drains it. Johnson with eight. That makes her the leading scorer so far, I believe, for the team. Rule has 11, leads all scores. Angelique 
Jones is looking for the ball. That's a big problem for South right now. Only two players have scored points for the Tigers. And aside from the three-pointer by Jihad, all the points have come for a rule. The last time I checked, basketball's a five-on-five. Five. <laughs> this is not NBA Jam two-on-two. Two. <laughs> rule double-teamed. And almost loses the ball, but Davis couldn't bring in the pass. Rule can't finish or can't falter. She is doing everything she can to keep her team in this game. Johnson gets her own rebound. Van Riper Rose. No. And an over the back call on Thule. That's her second. Duel with no points. She does have one block. Taylor's open. And she's the third South player to get on the board. South running what appears to be a zone. Oh, it looks more man now. And a steal. It's Rule. Even Perry's trying to stay uh, conservative in these last two minutes of the half, not wanting to make any Now uh, Lila Taylor's waking up. Not wanting to make any serious mistakes, but uh, South uh, capitalized on that and um, is trying to get some points. Taylor averages 7.6. She now has four. Is Eden Perry playing too conservatively? Uh, now they're trying to take chances, but now uh, these chances now mean South possession, maybe. Foul on Eden Prairie. Rule draws it. Eden Prairie did have one foul to give. And with one minute remaining at half number one, they used their last. It's on Thule. That's her third. Again, Eden Prairie has the edge in depth as they send in Knudsen and Sparkman. But EP plays about eight or nine players, so you take one out, then you have as a, almost as many players as South uses normally. Davis with the poke. And no finish, but Van Riper Rose is there to clean up the mess. That's her first two-pointer. She has eight. And that will stop the South momentum momentarily. 28 seconds. Best they can hope for now is to keep it within two possessions going into halftime and going in from there regrouping for the second half. Fouls on Davis and Eden Prairie in the penalty. One and one situation. Eden Prairie can hold for the final shot. Davis slips, jump ball. Eden Prairie will keep the ball. But give credit to South. Making Eden Prairie flinch just a little bit more. Yeah, and then going back to uh, Eden Prairie playing conservatively in these last two minutes. South is trying to uh, find a way to uh, exploit that conservatism in order to convert it into points, but it looks like there won't be any more points in this half with two seconds left. 
no, but they do force a key turnover that stopped Eden Curry from scoring, which keeps the deficit at seven. Very reachable for Minneapolis South. Eden Curry with the 25-18 lead, but if I'm the meal you had, I'm telling the South team, you know what, we're still in this game. We just can't play scared so much. Yeah, and um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of talk of that for sure in halftime. And um, just gonna tell them that the uh, talent level of this team is unlike the teams they played earlier. And that this, this will be a true test to see if they can go even further on when it comes to tournament time. And we're joined by Gary Knox of G Prep, a big girls basketball site, and she catching some action today. First of all, we'd like to ask, what have you seen so far? Well, in this game, I've seen, um, are you referring to this game particularly? Yes. This game, I see two teams going at it real hard. I, um, I really like the play of Tory Rules so far and the overall effort of the uh, Eden Prairie. Uh, right now, I think both teams are feeling each other out, and uh, right now, they have a good feel for each other. So I think the second half will uh, really tell the story and who, uh, who, who uh, steps up for each team. Now talk a little bit about your site, gprep.net. It has player rankings, it has stories, it has virtually everything you'd find in a cable network or a news magazine. And maybe give us some background on that, what led you to the start of that site and uh, why you continue to support it. Well, G Prep, uh, originally, I've, uh, I used to bring my daughters to all the uh, girls' high school game, and um, we noticed that you know, back then, four or five years ago, the girls weren't getting as much attention as they are now. Right now, they're getting a lot of attention. So I knew from playing uh, basketball in my high school years that uh, anyone that plays basketball like to read about themselves, like to uh, get kudos, and basically that's the whole premise of G Prep is basically just to give the girls a pat on the back uh, give them some kudos and just, uh, you know, get them to uh, get noticed, basically. And what have you noticed from these two teams over the season? You mentioned this is the first time you've seen South in action. Eden Prairie, of course, getting a lot of marquee games. What do, should we expect from these two teams in the final two weeks of the season? Well, I think uh, Eden Prairie is definitely an elite team, one of the top, maybe, from my, from my perspective, one of the top two teams, top two or three teams in the whole uh, state of Minnesota. I think South uh, has benefited from an easier schedule, but from seeing them today, they're, uh, they're definitely a force to be reckoned with. I think they, uh, they could cause some havoc and probably uh, possible beat, beat anyone on any given day. So uh, from seeing South in the first half, they look, uh, they look pretty impressive. And that reflects in the QRF rankings composed by MinnesotaScores.net. Eden Prairie, number two behind Hopkins. Minneapolis South, number 13. But a lot of that is influenced by the conference schedule as I show these numbers to you. Eden Prairie playing in the Tough Lake Conference where you've got Hopkins, Wyzetta, Edina, Minnetonka, South playing in a conference that's been weaker than past years because of the siphoning happening in Minneapolis North. Yeah, I think the Lake Conference is definitely an uh, extremely difficult uh, uh, conference. But I think we shouldn't overlook Lakeville North, though. They lost to uh, Hopkins early in the year. Uh, Lakeville North kind of came out uh, flat and wasn't, uh, I think, wasn't really in shape like they should have been. But I think don't underestimate Lakeville North. I think they could, uh, uh, as they, they're looking pretty good so far, they could possibly win it all again. I think right now they're, uh, they're quietly climb, uh, playing the, you know, their best basketball, Lakeville North and uh, Eden Prairie. So is Hopkins again. And Lakeville North's other loss this season was to Eden Prairie, but since then it's been all W's. And Class 4A, with two weeks left, who should we keep an eye on in terms of contenders for state? A lot of folks are betting on Hopkins and Eden Prairie in the final but you have Lakeville North and you've got a few other sleeper teams that could come in and surprise some people. I think the team that you have to look out for come tournament time, because and I know this for a fact, that's Eastview. Come tournament time, that's a very, very difficult team to face. They uh, Defensively, they, uh, they go after it. They have, as you know, they have the famed dribble drive offense. And uh, uh, they're, uh, I wouldn't want to play them uh, uh, come March. I think you have to watch out for Eastview, definitely Lakeville North again. Uh, Eden Prairie, Minneapolis South maybe. Uh, this 
this game has some seeding implications because if South end up winning this game, they could possibly get the number one seed over Hopkins. So this uh, this is a very important game uh, for the seeding implications as far as Hopkins and South is concerned. And don't forget Osseo in Section 5, very athletic team. There may be some favorites in the Class 4A field, but it's anybody's game as far as what happens with there. We're just about out of time, so thank you for taking the time to speak with us, and uh, good luck as you continue your coverage with gprep.net, and I know we'll be seeing you come state tournament time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. That was Gary Knox of gprep, and that concludes our interview with them. We'll come back with first half stats and analysis momentarily. Welcome back to Minneapolis South High School as TSB Television continues its coverage of high school girls basketball. Eden Prairie and South is the match we're at today. Let's take a look at our first half stats and analysis. And leading the way, Satoria Wool has 11 points for the Tigers. But when it comes to balance, South looking for a little more. Only four points out of Delilah Taylor and that three-pointer from Sadika Jihad. Eden Prairie getting that balance. Jackie Johnson and Morgan Van Riper Rose have eight points apiece. Taylor Ewell has two points. Aubrey Davis has two points. Shane Mullaney has five points. But in a game where we were expecting a lot of fireworks and offense, uh, I think we're still waiting for the ignition. Yeah, this uh, first half was characterized by turnovers and fouls. And we, this is a relatively low score we're seeing for uh, the first half mark but going into the second half this is a critical mo critical point in the game because um, South needs to find a way back into this game if they don't want this game to get away from them. Right now they're down seven points but they desperately need to get this a little bit closer if they want to, uh, to uh, not let this game run away from them early on in this half. South in the always stylish black jerseys. Eden Prairie in the white jerseys. And we start the first second half with an Eden Prairie foul. It's on Davis. Her second, uh, not the start Eden Prairie was looking for. It will be the start they're looking for if uh, South fails to get points on this possession right here. which they don't. I'd like to remind you, to order a DVD copy of this, visit thesportsbrain1.blogspot.com. That's thesportsbrain1.blogspot.com. Will it? To Johnson. Rebound, Laura Thomas. And Will we've got a story that will tickle you pink about Thomas later on in the broadcast. Rule is short, rebound Mullaney. Minneapolis South, of course, located near the Lake Street Station. Johnson can't finish. And another foul that will go against EP. We're seeing the turnovers and fouls already again right now early on this half. South just a couple blocks off Lake Street, so they're close to one of the epicenters of Minneapolis, Lake Street. I swear, the only street in the Twin Cities that always seems to be busy no matter what time of the day it is, no matter what day it is. Yeah, it always seems like traffic is always reduced to one lane on that street for some reason, no matter what's going on, any time of the year. Davis with the steal. I would say the second busiest street is Franklin <laughs> Avenue. Willick gets her first field goal. She gets her first field goal after she hesitated earlier on in this half that resulted in the block. 27-18, Eden Prairie over South. And another Eden Prairie foul. They pick up three quick fouls in 87 seconds. It's not good for when we get to the end of the half when players might find themselves in foul trouble, for sure. Or the penalty. But give credit to the Eden Prairie defense. Millennia is short. Thomas is blocked by Johnson.
Van Riper Rose is fouled. Drew the shooting foul. She will head to the line. Van Riper Rose, long time varsity member for the Eagles, going to the University of Denver, a mid major in Division I. Moment of pioneers in the Sun Belt Conference, I believe. That's actually now moving to, I believe, I Mount, believe Mountain the West. Mountain, what? Mountain West Conference, but as a non football team. Because I believe they do not have a football team at Denver. You mean there's relocations that aren't influenced by football? Nope. <laughs> they are what they call, Denver is actually what they call a uh, one AAA school, which is a school that doesn't have a football team, but is Division I. So is Marquette. <laughs> Another Eden Prairie foul. This one on Johnson. That's her first, but Eden Prairie now with 14 fouls with 15.34 to go. They got to work on their poise. South hasn't done much to take advantage, though. They have yet to score a basket in this half. Not much rule can do. Davis, coast to coast, count it. And now this game is starting to get away from South, and right here is a, possibly a point of no return right now as uh, Eden Prairie is trying to get on a uh, fire streak, or on the verge of it if they're not already in that fire streak. Maybe with the this, uh, Free throw right here, they will be. Maybe not. No good on the free throw, but if Eden Prairie scores another basket and South doesn't respond, I would expect a timeout. And the basketball to start glowing and have a smoke trail. Have you played those uh, midway games, you know, NFL Blitz and NBA and NBC? Not in years. <laughs> Another Eden Prairie foul. It's on Mullaney. Well, she makes up for it with the steal. Finds Johnson. And now we can see the smoke coming from the basketball. Eight nothing run to start the second half for Eden Prairie, even though they have five fouls. Rule on the line. Gets the two. No, they rule it a three. I thought she was on the line. When in doubt, call it a three. No replay system to review it either. <laughs> Davis, you can't draw the foul and can't get the basket. Delilah Taylor with the rebound. Jihad bringing the ball up. That was a badly needed three by rule. She has 14 points. Lane wants in, won't get it. And Taylor could have had an offensive rebound, but she wasn't ready. And then Riper Rose gets called for the offensive foul, and that's important because that's Eden Prairie's last foul to give. They will now be in the penalty for the remainder of the game. It's on Van Riper Rose. No player on Eden Prairie in significant foul trouble, at least none of their starters are. But South's going to be at the free throw line for the remainder of this game for any foul Eden Prairie commits, and that's a, a big plus if South can utilize it. Yeah, and like you said, the only positive out of this is that Eden Prairie's fouls have been distributed relatively evenly among the players, so not only do they uh, have a balance on points, they have a balance on who's making the fouls as well. You have to think South will be looking to take advantage of Eden Prairie's foul situation. Johnson, got it. That gives her a dozen, close to her average of 14.2. Lane, 
thought about it, but no. Rule wants it. Bullseye! Two big threes for Satoria Rule. As she keeps South on life support. 17 points for Tori. Van Riper Rose can't get the foul, but she does get the basket. And now she has a dozen. Eden Prairie mirroring their season stat sheet. I don't know, Van Riper Rose sounds like the name of some uh, hypothetical 80s hair metal band. <laughs> Combination of two, actually. Yes. Van Halen and Guns N' Roses. Ewell is fouled. I believe it will go on Taylor. Taylor Ewell named Gatorade Player of the Year for soccer as she goes to the free throw line. The first Minnesota player in soccer to get that honor. Led Eden Prairie to a 20-0-1 record, scoring 30 goals and five assists in the 2010 season. And she's used to making penalty shots in soccer, so a free throw should be nothing for her right now. <laughs> and Minnesota program that's on the rise. They made the, the NCAA tournament two of the last three years. Ewell's going to be fun to watch over there. Green can't finish. And Van Rijp Rose went down with a drooled incidental. Well, Ewell will be playing her games in St. Paul over at Elizabeth Ryle Robbie Stadium on the St. Paul campus. I didn't know that the women played their matches in the St. Paul campus. Three to a ten. <laughs> Unlike here today, I believe. Yeah, but we have a few perks. Yes. <laughs> South always happy to have a broadcast crew come in, and South has been receptive of us over the years through the Taylor Hill era and after she graduated and headed for Ohio State. <laughs> Angela Green touches a little off. They could have used Taylor Hill in that three-point attempt there. Eleven thirty-nine left in the second half. It's 38-24, Eden Prairie over Minneapolis South. And it seems like there's more people here in the second half than there were in the first half. It's like each time I look down, it's like the crowd gets bigger here. South has that effect on people. Rule. Jeez, on fire. You want to talk about sparks and smoke and flames? Rule found hers. Yeah, the, uh, they... Uh, put out the fire that Ian Perry started and started it on fire instead. South still down by 11, but you really have to like the performance coming out of Satoria Rule. And that's a big reason why Minneapolis South is number four in the state in Class 4A. Eden Perry, of course, number one. And I do believe that's 20 points now for a Rule, actually. That's what I have. Lane. Rebound she had and she's fouled. And again, Eden Prairie in the penalty. It's ruled a shooting foul, so two free throws. South still with three to give. So here comes Jihad, who missed her first free throw in the first half. Again, the daughter of head coach Emil Jihad. Still deciding on where she'll play college ball, but she and Laura Thomas and Diamond Lane are all getting offers. And Emil Jihad has stressed this throughout his career, even though he had the Superstar Hill. It's not so much the accolades they get in high school. It's about setting themselves up for the next chapter. He likes to see all his kids move on to college. And when you've got Emil Jihad as a, not only as a coach, as a father, you've got yourself a built-in agent also, too, to help do your negotiations for when you're uh, 
going around to the different schools. And he does holds the 6 a.m. practices, not because he has a vendetta against anybody. He just feels that if you get it done in the morning, that gives them the afternoon to focus on their other work. Now, I know there's at least one player on South who's never late to those 6 a.m. practices. And another Eden Prairie foul. No, it's ruled a turnover. I thought it was a foul, but instead it was just ruled Minneapolis South ball after Eden Prairie touched it. If that had been another foul, that would have sent South to the line. And a chance to rectify those two missed free throws from uh, Jihad. Jihad's missed all three. Has just the one three-pointer. But she finds Thomas. And Thomas mm -hmm. with the roll up. So her first points of the game. Thomas getting a scholarship, a $120,000 scholarship offered by a Latino organization. Her ancestry goes back to Puerto Rico. And so wherever she goes to college, it's basically paid for. <laughs> and Jackie Johnson will have, no doubt have her college tuition paid for as she puts up her 14 points. Green travel. Sparkman, no contact, no foul. Saxton, no good. Lane with numbers. No good. Minneapolis South Ball, much to the dismay of the Ian Curry fans in attendance. Starting to get a little rowdy in here finally. Not quite as rowdy as the old South Central rivalry from a couple years ago, which was the hottest rivalry in girls basketball. <laughs> In 07 and 08, of course, those two teams playing each other in the 4A final. Things were so heated, you had fans chanting the respective area codes. <laughs> 612 and 651, wow. Jahad races through the picket fence, but a little too strong. She's had an off game. Sparkman looking to draw the foul, but she traveled. That's the right call. And that's not good. Sparkman's holding her knee. I didn't see what happened after the traveling call. Yeah, I didn't see any contact from any of the uh, South players. And, but it, either way, it doesn't look good right now for her as the respective uh, teams are at their benches now. 9-10 remaining in the second half. It's always something you're concerned about, especially with knees. Female basketball players, it's been documented for years. A lot of knee injuries over the years. Um, Gets look, back up, but she's limping. Looks like she's done for the afternoon, probably. Sparkman, a reserve for the Eagles. Averages 4.6 points per game. And again, I didn't see what happened after the traveling call. But I'm guessing she came down awkwardly. But it's been something a lot of folks are looking into why so many female players have knee problems. The most common of them being the dreaded ACL tear. It doesn't look that serious, at least from what we saw. Mm -hmm. And another Eden Prairie player is down. She it's Aubrey like she's Davis. In pain too. The Eagles are dropping like flies. Did you see any contact in that play? I didn't see that one either because I was turning over to share my discussion. But it's still not a sight you want to see, regardless of who you're cheering for. Mm -hmm. Davis averaging nine points per game. And that's not a good sign. 
she's giving an ovation from the South fans as she comes off, which while these matches might get rowdy at the end of the day, these are uh, these or not just competitors, but students at the end of, at the end of the day and peers. And Minneapolis South fans are very familiar with that as well. In the 2009 state tournament final, Taisha Smith tore her ACL. She suffered an injury early where she bruised it in the first half, but wanted to go back in, try to, and then re-injured that knee later in the first half and set out the remainder of the state tournament final. Taylor Hill took the team on her shoulders, scoring 47 points. Taisha Green with the layup. That was her career high and tied the all-time tournament record for most points in a single game. You see Tanisha Green getting into the uh, mix with two points now. And you have to think, Di if Diamond Lane can get going as well, that might give South enough energy, enough life to make one final push. And right now, they're Eden Perry minus two players, a reserve and a starter. And here's a chance for South to take advantage. We have Saxton back in or Mindy McGrew, I should say, number 31, and Taylor Ewell, the Gatorade Player of the Year for Soccer, and Eden Prairie electing to slow things down, which I believe is the right call with no shot clock. But you can't stay back too long. And that's why because Eden Perry steps on the line. As Van Rifle Rose tried to work off the screen, that's the downside to holding back, especially if that's not your tempo. Yeah, and um, it's almost eight minutes left in this game right here, and uh, they can't afford to play conservatively this early on in the half because we saw what it did in the last two minutes of the first half and how South was using the... Uh, Eden Prairie strategy as a way to uh, get points on the board for them, or at least make tries for points. That Riper Rose with the steal. Finding Yule open. Yule with the bank. How do they say in soccer? Goal! Uh, if you're a Spanish announcer. Or I shall say football. English announcers have a few other ways of pointing the term. Such as goal, or <laughs> he scores, or what just happened, I missed it, I, I was asleep. Rule is blocked by Johnson. That's what happened. <laughs> Mullaney in the paint. Van Riper Rose is fouled. 6.40 to go in the second half. And we'll send her to the line again. She averages 14.2 points per game. She has 12 points on the day. Timeout, Minneapolis South. And while we're on a timeout, we'd like to remind you that following our game, we will have interviews with our players of the game for both teams. That's coming up at the conclusion of this game. So don't go anywhere. With 6.40 left, South down by 11, how do they respond to an Eden Prairie team that not only presses, but has the height advantage as we see Aubrey Davis back in the huddle for the Eagles? Um, Your guess is as good as ours, let's put it that way. Yes, that's why I'm not in coaching. <laughs> But if I uh, had to guess, I would I would make a lot of threes probably <laughs> to uh, try to counter the uh, tall uh, girls that are uh, around the goal and key area. Eden Prairie, I imagine, will be keying on rule for the final 640 because she made those three three-pointers in this half. 
Yeah, but I don't know if they want to go to the same well too many times before uh, Eden Prairie picks up on that pattern. Well, here's the thing. Once they pick up on that pattern, that gives you an option. <laughs> <laughs> the best offensive players know when to use themselves as a decoy. And Eden Prairie fans, while their school is always going to be known for football with their head coach, Mike Grant, the son of former Vikings great, Bud Grant, I'm sure the basketball fans are loving the fact their team hasn't missed a beat since the coaching change from Hargrove to NBA veteran Chris Carr. Fouls on McGrew, and that will put South at the line. Eden Prairie's toned things down a bit since they racked up those fouls early. Yeah, it has a way of uh, calming down the team once you uh, give up your uh, fouls to give. Satoria Rule. At the beginning of the season, signed a letter of intent to play at Providence, a Division I member of the Big East Conference. And a school that, or a conference that's going to add uh, your collegiate rival. Yes, Texas Christian University will join as a football member, making the Big East even bigger. I'll give the to what, uh, 49 schools? Almost. They can, have their own, they can have their own NCAA tournament, probably, in their own conference one day. Diamond Lane picks up her fourth foul, but Emil Jihad has no choice but to leave her in because of the depth situation. But she responds with the steal. But if I'm in Prairie, I'm setting my sights on number 10. Or not setting their sights if she's being used as a decoy sooner or later. Rule. Another three pointer. That's her fourth of the half. 25 points. South down by seven. Well, they're making a game out of this. And remember, I said earlier they need to make threes. Well, there you go. And now they're in their way back in this game. 25 of the 36 points for Minneapolis South have come from Satoria Rule. They need to change the name of the team from the South Tigers to the South, South Rules. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that coming as soon as you mentioned the name. <laughs> I'm sure Mark Sanders, the athletic director, and the always colorful South Athletic staff will be in touch with you to discuss that. Yes. Delilah Taylor rips down a big rebound. I will want to proceed of all uh, of all uh, apparel purchases, at least, that have the big rules on it. <laughs> it's uh, the divisor of that name. Buck Sander, rule again. Holy cow! It's a four-point game. Where is Rule Fowler's stroke from behind the line? And I need to check my phone out because I think the athletic director is calling me now about that. <laughs> and Johnson is fouled by Rule. That's Minneapolis South last to give. And it's Rule the shooting foul. No, they do not rule it a shooting foul. I didn't think it was ruled a shooting foul. And the officials correct it. We had an intense game here on Tuesday at Richfield. Well, we have another one here just off of Lake Street. Steal! And it is steal right back! Buell to Mullaney. And Eden Prairie wisely backing off. They know they can eat a clock. They could conceivably run out the clock. But I don't think South's going to let them. Both teams in the penalty.
I don't see Davis on the bench. Sparkman rested, has her knee wrapped up in ice. I saw Davis uh, walking around, and I assumed that her injury was Taylor Ewell comes up with a big Eden Prairie basket. Wasn't as uh, severe as I first thought, but uh, I don't see her there, so I'm guessing her injury uh, is putting out for the rest of the game. And Eden Sparkman. Prairie is called for a foul. That's the last thing Chris Carr wants to see because that means South goes to the line and the clock stops. Yeah, and if they get these two uh, free throws right here, they'll only be down by uh, two baskets. And they send South's top player back to the charity strike. If she makes both of these, he can give her 20 or maybe not. Diamond Lane, no good. And another foul, this time South in the double bonus. It's on the groove, South not giving up. Even if South doesn't come away with the win, you have to think this game will put Minneapolis South on the short list of 4A contenders just as they were a couple years ago. Yeah, I mean, it, if you lose close to a school like Eden Prairie, you have to be a considered a contender, even if you don't win. That's Kanisha Green, who had one field goal all game. <laughs> South at the double bonus now, so they will shoot two free throws for any foul for the remainder of this game, unless it's an offensive foul. And if they, even if they do lose this game, the way they played in the last few minutes of the game, this will give them uh, confidence and a uh, momentum booster going into the next game and the rest of the regular season. Green makes both. Lane has to be careful. She has four. And a steal! It's Rule with numbers. Here she comes. She had Lane open. She should have gone to her. And she falls on the ball. And the meals he has wisely uses one of his two timeouts. But that play, I know Lane was struggling. I know Rule wants to carry this team on her shoulders, but I would have kicked out to Lane. Yeah, I mean, you knew she uh, went under the hoop that there wasn't really a way she could get the points, but her should have passed it out because they were uh, gonna look to her to uh, make the play and Eden Prairie rightfully uh, defensively shut her down when they should have uh, used the decoy uh, play. At least South should use the decoy play right there to get the points. And speaking of the colorful South Athletic staff, as we have this timeout with 257, they have Mark Sanders who runs the audio board. Their assistant athletic director shares his name with a NASCAR champion, Tony Stewart. And as you might guess, he's a big NASCAR fan. Of course, he really was digging Tony Stewart's the NASCAR driver in the year Stewart was driving the orange number 20. <laughs> Still cheers for him, even though he switched to the number 14 red Chevrolet. But uh, always happy to chat up about NASCAR. <laughs> and Daytona's right around the corner, right? The Super Bowl of stock car racing. <laughs> and right now, we've got a Super Bowl in the Twin Cities. 45, 41. Lane. Scramble, jump ball, and Eden Prairie with the possession arrow. Look for Eden Prairie to uh, eat more uh, time off the clock. And they are in the penalty. Both teams, I should say. Eden Prairie is in the bonus, so they know if they can draw a foul, they go to the line. That's the person you want to draw a foul against, Diamond Lane. What is it, Seattle? <laughs> what a Seattle reference. Don't you remember the earthquake? There's a lot of earthquakes in Seattle. Well, Definitely. the one that was caused by the fans after the Seahawks Saints game? Oh, that one. <laughs> um, the only earthquake after Marshawn Lynch's 67 yard touchdown run? 
The only earthquake in Seattle I remember was uh, the one where Bill Gates was giving a Microsoft presentation, I believe, and uh, there was an earthquake. I wonder if Apple set that up <laughs> Steve Jobs. <laughs> Johnson makes one of two. That gives her 15. Eden Perry up by five. But South can still pull this to a one possession lead with a basket. In that case, I think Bill Gates is responsible for the 89 earthquake during the World Series <laughs> to hit Apple. South turns it over. And I think this is where the battle-tested duration of Eden Prairie is coming to fruition. They know how to play in games like this. They had two close ones with Hopkins. Minneapolis South, it's been a while. But they've been in some close ones as well. Mulaney with the big basket. She's been quiet, only seven points, but that was a huge basket. Green out to Thomas. And it really comes down to the support options. South, not as strong <laughs> with their reserves as Eden Prairie is. Yeah, we see uh, Eden Prairie shedding the conservative ways right now in the last few minutes of the game, being aggressive and not being afraid to take chances in order to get points to keep the, uh, at least the gap between the two teams the same on the scoreboard. Well, we were talking about Prairie Seas Academy earlier. A few rows behind us is Jarvis Johnson, who plays basketball on the boys' team. The younger brother of Tyshana Johnson, Mate Johnson Patterson, also in attendance for this game. The De La Salle head coach. Yeah, everyone who's ever anyone in um, uh, Minneapolis uh, high school basketball seems to be here. Well, the big story with Jarvis Johnson and. We mentioned this with the timeout with 136 left. Suffered a heart attack and was clinically dead. But came back, he revived, and Faye Johnson Patterson called it nothing short of the miracle. Meanwhile, his big sister Tyshana has the game of her life in a overtime victory against Minnetonka. She took two games off to be with her brother, who's also the nephew of head coach Faye Johnson Patterson. And a big sigh of relief from the De La Salle fan base, the Minneapolis community, and certainly the Johnson family. And everyone stops uh, still with uh, the Johnson family right now as they uh, appear to be in the recovery process right now. Well, it's just nice to see Jarvis Johnson. It's almost as if nothing happened. He has a pacemaker in him. Certainly a big story. Traveling violation on Mullaney. 125 left. South not out of this yet. Eden Perry has been battle tested all season. Well, here's another test to add to their resume. In their 11th game against a ranked opponent. Eden Perry, they certainly know how to schedule games outside of the conference. I'll give them that much. <laughs> Who does the scheduling? Uh, coaches in part. Outside of the conference, the coaches have to fill them in. Diamond Lane just has not found her shot all day. Rule has. Goes out to Lane again. And you have to wonder if Lane makes even a couple of those baskets, will that change the outcome of this game? Well, it's less than a minute left, so uh, they still have a uphill task, even if they made a three here. 38 seconds, and remember, clock doesn't stop for a made basket at this level. Lane not giving up, and she's just not finding it. It's uh, looking at her as like uh, back when you used to play uh, bat shoot hoops at Chuck E. Cheese and try to make the baskets, but they never go in over and over. Seems that whenever Rule touches the ball, the rim opens up. Whenever Lane touches the ball, the basket just shuts itself off, and now the South fans are filing out early with the outcome of this game essentially decided with 23.7 seconds left. Effectively a uh, 
uh, the time of possession if we use the shot clock at this level. Well, what it came down to, again, Rule had a great game, but Diamond Lane just couldn't find her shot. And Lane is no slouch. She averages 13.6 per game on offense. And she just couldn't find the basket today. You know, she even gets a couple of those baskets south in position for an upset. It's yeah, just not her day today. Yeah, that was one of the uh, things that uh, factored into what looks like will be an Eden Curry victory was Lane just wasn't, uh, wasn't there today being able to make the points. She's one of the team leaders, but, um, but her misfortune is... Uh, Eden leads to Eden Prairie's uh, benefit. But here's something that's interesting. Tony here, who we both spoke with before the game, and again, a big fan and supporter of girls basketball, for the second week in a row, will not cover his spread. He had Richfield beating North St. Paul by 12. Richfield did win it, but it was only by four, and they had to sweat it out. He had Eden Prairie winning by 23, and I don't think he's going to cover the spread a second time. Or at least predicted the winner. Yeah, he might be losing his touch a little bit, though. Yeah. There's Thomas. Good point. And you have to think south as Diamond Lane will foul out there. If South is going to make a serious run in section play to try to upset Hopkins, Minnetonka, and maybe Wyzetta for a state tournament appearance, they have to find a way to get players outside of rule, outside of lane to step up. They don't have as much as Eden Prairie does. Yeah. And Hopkins is loaded. I've seen them a couple times this year at the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic and the Dix Sporting Goods Holiday Classic. Hopkins built very much like the St. Paul Johnson boys team. I'd love to see a game between those two teams, actually. <laughs> Who's your money on for that hypothetical game? Uh, I'd say Hopkins, actually. Johnson's lost a couple games this year. <laughs> I'd say Hopkins might have the edge. <laughs> but a well-played game by South as Sartoria Rule missed a three, but it's a moot point. South falls a little bit short, but I think they made a big statement here, a 50 to 41 win. And for Eden Prairie, just another day in their battle-tested schedule as they have a couple more games left against top 10 opponents when they play another game with Hopkins and Minnetonka. And uh, this will give them the confidence going into those next two games. They uh, rose to the occasion when they actually had a uh, real uh, opponent in South this afternoon. So we will take a quick break and come back with our players of the game, Jackie Johnson for Eden Prairie and Satoria Rule for Minneapolis South. Don't go anywhere. Mike Peden here with Eden Prairie's player of the game, Jackie Johnson. Jackie, a big game for you and another test in Eden Prairie's battle-tested schedule. How did you come pull through against South? Um, we just stuck to our game plan, and although we had some rough patches, we just tried to have solid defense and... Um, be patient on offense and not um, get flustered with their pressure. And describe the transition from Chris Carr when he took over this year because what we I've seen out of Eden Prairie, the Eagles haven't missed a beat since last year. Um, he just really, we focus on defense every day. Um, that's our number one goal. Um, we Every day we talk about how we want to win a state championship and it all starts with playing together and just um, improving every ac aspect of our last year's weaknesses. And what has he brought with his NBA experience that has helped you and the rest of the Eagles this season? Um, just like experience, um, he knows um, for me, because I'm tall, like what to do as opposed to getting me ready for college. And for the other girls, um, he's just played against so many different great players. He, the moves and just a lot of different aspects. He helps everyone. And speaking of experience, a lot of it with Eden Prairie, and that includes a win over Hopkins in your recent meeting. You've got another one with Hopkins, and you've got Minnetonka left. So how does this game help you prepare for those final few late conference games and section play where you've got Bloomington Jefferson in the mix? Um, well, we've just been trying to stay on a good um, winning streak and 
every game's a battle and um, we just focus one game at a time, so we haven't really thought about those, just we try to win one at a game at a time. Describe the mood and the atmosphere and the game plan with South Poland to within four on a Satoria rule three-pointer to make it 43-39. Um, she's a great player. Um, it was really hard to stop her. Obviously, she had a lot of points. We just we stuck to our game plan, um, had to guard her a little closer, but we tried not to get flustered, and it worked, and we did well. All right, I know you got to go, but I have one more question for okay. you. Anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching? Um, <laughs> hi, Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> I'm sure they enjoy that. I'm sure your whole family and the Eden Prairie fans enjoy that. Thank you for taking the time okay, to speak with us. You. Congratulations. Uh, an amazing season for Eden Prairie no matter what happens. Yep, thank you. Jackie Johnson, Eden Prairie's player of the game, will have Satoria Rule shortly. Mike Peden here with Satoria Rule, Minneapolis South's player of the game. You scored 28 points. Minneapolis South came a little bit short today, but I think this game will make other 4 opponents respect South if they haven't already. You put up quite a fight. Yeah. You just tried to execute and get a win. Everybody went hard, and I'm proud of them. But hopefully we can get some good wins down the stretch that will help us further along down the road. This is your second year with South. And how have you adapted and developed with Emil Jihad's system and the 6 a.m. practices oh, that he has his team do? I adapted very well. We've been, I have been playing with him since AAU, since about seventh grade. So I know all the girls very well. We grew up. We're like sisters. So, I mean, the chemistry is there. Everybody loves everyone. It's good. I'm good. I like it here. It's come comfortable. Describe the feeling when South, it looked like they were going to fade away, and then you came back, made it a four-point game with a three-pointer as you were falling, and you just kept finding yourself open from behind the arc. The feeling, I don't know. We were just trying to stay very poised and trying to handle adversity, and we were just trying to make a run. We wanted to get the win. Everybody was feeling feeling a little giddy, giddy up, so to, step, so to speak. I just wanted to calm it down and get a shorter lead, you know, for them or a possible lead for us. This is your first ranked opponent since December 21st. And so what does a team like Eden Prairie do to teach you any last minute <coughs> adjustments and formations as you have two weeks of the regular season and then section play where you've got Hopkins, Minnetonka, and YZ all in the mix? We have to execute down the stretch and begin the game coming out strong with energy and just learning how to stay poised even when they put the press on. Now, there's still a couple weeks left, but South has already clinched the city conference title. We'll host the Twin Cities Championship here in two weeks. What does that mean for you hosting the annual tradition of the Battle of the River? Uh, I don't know. It just gives us another advantage, I guess. We just want to still come out strong as always. And before you go, anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching online or on television? Um, hey, Mom. Hi, Dad. Everybody that loves me. I love you guys, too. Well, I saw even some of your former teammates, Serena Baker over there, everybody uh, congratulating you. Those are my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too late to get her in there? No, she can come. <laughs> come, on. come on, Serena and Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> She's oh, like, scary. Who, who are you? <laughs> oh, that's Chanel Dickinson. Here they come. I don't South believe it. <laughs> We've got the tri-metro rivalry over there. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, are you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're like, I don't know, maybe another day. <laughs> That's scared. No, I think they're they're happy to give the spotlight to you this time. We had Vinny Ha and De La Salle earlier this season. <laughs> okay, but just funny. an example of the friendship and the camaraderie, even on different teams, everybody is all friends with each other. Anybody, anything you want to say about those two uh, while they're here? Um, I don't know. I love them. They're good ball players. <laughs> they're smart. We kick it a lot, so we're cool. Well, and you're in different classes, so you won't be playing against each other in the state tournament, so maybe you can all celebrate uh, success later on in postseason. I agree. All well, right. A lot to happen before then, though. Who knows what will happen, but thanks for taking the time to speak with us, and just a lot of fun covering Minneapolis South, as always. You're welcome. Thank you. Satoria Rule, Minneapolis South's player of the game with a game-high 28 points. That does it from here. From everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.